So now that we've looked at configuring Radius clients and Radius servers or remote server groups, the next step is to look at policies. And so if you expand policies here, you'll see we have two different types of policies. I'll go ahead and move this over so we can see a little bit better. We have remote connection policies and we have network policies. So let's start by looking at remote re or connection request policies. There we go. Now, you'll notice we have a couple of them already created. Uh, the Microsoft Routing and Remote Access Service Policy it policy is enabled. The processing order is number one. The remote server, it's for remote access server VPN. This was automatically created when we installed. And down here you'll see some of the values of the conditions. We've got a date and time restriction for basically all the time. And then we have the authentication provider set to the local computer. So basically this says any time that something comes in, any time uh, that something comes into this server, a connection request, we will process it on the local computer. Now we can uh, disable this, delete this, duplicate it, move it around, whatever. If we want to edit the policy, we double click on the policy and we can set the policy name, the type of service, the conditions, and this only has one day and time. We can add more, edit or remove the condition. And then the settings determine the authentication method. So override NPS authentication settings, the network policy settings, let me get that right. Override the network policy authentication settings, which we'll look at here in a little while. We can specify whether we're authenticating here, forwarding it to a, rem a remote server group, which you can see we've created one already, so that's good. Or we can accept users without validating credentials, probably not a good idea. And then we can also set up our accounting, our realm name, and our radius attributes. Okay, that is the existing network connection policy. Now remember, the network connection policy, let me try this again the connection request policy, get the right word here, the connection request policies do not authenticate users. The uh, connection request policies determine which servers should be used to authenticate users. So we can leave this alone if we want to and this will authenticate everything locally. <clears throat> or we can create an additional one. Now typically we wouldn't necessarily need to create an additional one unless this one didn't cover it. And basically remember this one, the only condition is at any time authenticate locally. So that's it. And it's going to handle everything locally. So if we want to use this as a proxy or proxy some requests, then we can create another policy. And here's how we do that. Let's right click on connection request policies and click new. And we're just going to call this one temp because, you know, we're being boring. Now, we can specify the type of network access server. Unspecified remote desktop or remote access server for VPN or dial-up. If you're using 802.1x, then you'd set it as unspecified. Now, you may also have something from a specific vendor, and the specific vendor of the network access server might use a vendor-specific code, and that would be numeric code that you could set here, and then just set this to whatever it's going to be. So I want to go ahead and leave this as unspecified for the moment and click next. Now we have to specify a condition. So this policy will only be used if this condition is met. So let me go ahead and add just so we can see what our conditions are. We can set them for specific usernames, specific access client. Now remember this is the access client is the client device that's trying to connect to the access server. So we can set the access client IP address. We can set it based on framed protocol, which type of service, which type of tunnel, any specific day or time, the calling station ID, the client friendly name, the client, and these are radius client properties, right? Not the access client properties. So this would be the friendly name, the calling station ID, the IPv4, IPv6 address of 
the access server that the clients are connected to, the uh, access clients are connecting to. The vendor, we can set it based on gateway. So we can set any of these options we want. So I'm just going to pick the date and time one here. I'm going to add in, and then I'm going to specify all the time permitted. Okay. So this is going to use this for any connection requests that come in during any of the times specified in which we just set. So let's go to next, and this is going to identify what we do with it. Authenticate requests on this server, forward to a specific group, or accept users without validating. And then the accounting, forward accounting requests to the remote radio server group. We'll take a look at that a little bit later. Okay, once I choose where I want it to authenticate, I click next. And then I can override the network policy authentication settings. Now, typically, I'm not going to want to do that. Uh, hopefully, I'm setting these settings correctly in the network policy settings. But occasionally, I might have a reason where my network policy setting says one thing, and I want to override that with this particular access policy uh, or connection request policy. So if I want to override, this is where I would do that with. Here, this is where I would do that. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And then we can set up some additional settings. So these are settings to be applied to the uh, connection request if these particular commission conditions are met. I'm not going to worry about that at the moment. I'm going to click Next, and now I can finish. Now, if you were paying attention here, you probably noticed that this policy perfectly matches the previous policy, but that's fine. I'm going to click Finish, and here is my policy. Only difference is this one is unspecified. The other one was for remote access, uh, server, or VPN, or dial-up access. So now I've set this policy will come into place if it's a remote access request at any day or time. This one will come into play if it's uns from an unspecified source at any day or time. And both of them, remember, in this remote or this connection request policy, it's all about where do we send this authentication request. We haven't given any conditions yet, any policies on whether we're going to grant or deny access. That's what happens in our network policies, and that's what we're going to look at in our next video.